quiz two. Something to do with uh, the plant kingdom and variation in flower parts. A little more detail about the plant life cycle with actual little drawings of plants. This is the fern life cycle and starting at the beginning we see a spore number one single cell that divides by mitosis to form number two a gametophyte which in ferns is kind of a small flat thing about the size of a fingernail that typically has both antheridia and archegonia of which by the way um the uh, number three shows antheridia because you can see the sperm coming out of it number four is an archegonium excuse me number four is an egg because it's a single cell contained within an archegonium number five is um is uh, mitosis the process by which um gametes are formed in haploid gametophytes number six is an example of one of those gametes it's a sperm Number seven is a fertilized egg or a zygote contained within the archegonium where the egg was and still sort of is the egg except it's fertilized. It's a single diploid cell that develops by mitosis to form um, number eight, um, a sporophyte, a diploid sporophyte, with, which, which have structures called sporangia within which meiosis takes place. And... Those, that's number nine is the sporangium, and number 10 is the um, process meiosis. Nice. Oh, right. And here it is again. Um, same thing, but just uh, bigger, I guess. So let's move along. Nothing to see here. <laughs> uh, what do these look like? You know, uh, what do the gametophytes and the sporophytes look like in, in some of these... Uh, um, iconic plants, some of these exemplars. Well, um, a moss gametophyte is a small stemmed leafy plant. It's what you would normally point to and say there's a moss. It's uh, small stems of small leaves. It's green. It's typically about an inch or two high or um, a couple of centimeters if you like that system. And that's what the moss gametophyte is. It's the persistent perennial part if it's a perennial moss. The sporophyte consists of a stalk with a single sporangium that is attached to the female gametophyte. It looks like a part of the plant, but now we know it's a separate stage in the life cycle. It's a, it's a, it's a separate plant. Ferns. Um, the fern gametophytes are small, flat, about the size of a fingernail. They're, they're very indistinctive and uh, 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 inconspicuous, but they have gam gametangia on them. The fern sporophyte is what we typically think of when we think of the fern. Leafy, large. Um, so that's um, the distinction, is that the moss is the dominant stage in the life cycle is the gametophyte, and in ferns it's a sporophyte. And in all other plants, other than bryophytes, it's a sporophyte. About, um, about water and sexual reproduction. Well, in non-seed plants, the sperm needs to swim through environmental water in order to get to the egg. Unlike with seed plants, where the sperm is contained within a pollen grain, which is carried by the wind or by vectors, animal vectors. We learned about flower parts in several levels of detail. We learned that the individual flower stalk is a pedicel. We learned that usually green leaf-like appendages that um, uh, protect the flower and bud are called sepals. Oh, it says calyx twice. It's not supposed to. It's supposed to say um, sepals in the, in, the, in the parentheses. Um, no, it's supposed to say sepals out to the left, and calyx is supposed to be in parentheses. Petals, the collective term is corolla, and the term for both the petals and the sepals is called the perianth. A nice word because it means around the anthers. Speaking of which, um, the male part of the flower is called the andresium. It consists of, um, of stamens, um, which um, should have been labeled in there. The word stamen is appropriate, and the andresium is just a name for all of the stamens. And the stamens have parts, a slender supporter, supportive stalk called a filament, and uh, a pollen sac called an anther. The pistil slash gynesium 
has basically three three parts, four if you want to count the interior, and I do. It, there's the ovary at the bottom, within which there are ovules. The ovary is the future fruit, the ovules are the future seeds. Way at the top is a special receptive area for pollen. It's called the stigma, and the style connects the stigma with the ovary. About uh, reproduction in flowering plants. What are the gametophytes? We got an idea what the gametophytes are in the non-seed plants. Um, what are they in, in the flowering plants? They're very, very small. There's, this been, uh, there's been this evolutionary tendency for the gametophytes to become comparatively small relative to the sporophytes as plants became more and more uh, advanced, I guess you could call them. So a male gametophyte is basically just a pollen grain. You know, when it's germinated, I think it fully deserves that term. And look at the way it's drawn here. It's, um, it's drawn as being a, a little um, circular thing with an extension. That's called the pollen tube. And on the outside is supposed to be a little um, covering of the pollen grain. And it contains two sperm. That's important. Those aren't just uh, schematic. That is indicative of the fact that there are not one, not three, not any other number except two. Um, the female gametophyte, um, it's, it's contained within the ovule. And it um, basically has eight cells in it, of which we're really interested in three of them. Um, two are in the middle, and they're some, sometimes called the central cells or polar nuclei, and the, the all-important egg. Got to have an egg, otherwise it wouldn't be a gametophyte. And then there's a little opening called the micropyle. And what happens is that the pollen tube grows down the dial and enters into the ovary and into the ovule through the micropyle and then what happens there are two sperm and maybe they flip a coin or something to decide uh, which one gets to fertilize the egg and which one gets to fuse with the um, polar nuclei but that's what happens one sperm fuses with the egg to do what you'd expect sperm to do which is to form a diploid zygote and then later on an embryo sporophyte and the other one uh, one plus one plus one. Matthew and I can do three. It forms a triploid tissue, and that triploid tissue is endosperm. So in this diagram, what's labeled central cell, which to me would be cells, I think that might be a misprint, um, and um, that is what happens. Uh, we have this nutritive tissue called endosperm. And the process of making the endosperm happens concomitantly, concomitantly, concomit, con can, never mind, at the same time as um, fertilization. I imagine so that the plant doesn't waste its energy making food for a baby that isn't there. And that's called double fertilization. We learned about fruits. A fruit is a ripened, oh, wait, I know this. A fruit is a ripened ovary containing seeds. And um, as an example, we looked at the peanut. Crack open a peanut, you're cracking over the ovary. There might be one or two or three seeds inside. There's a papery um, covering on the outside, which is the seed coat. Uh, most of the peanut is the cotyledons, which are seed leaves um, that basically serve as nutritive tissue. It replaces the endosperm as the seed develops. That happens with many seeds. Some seeds, the nutritive tissue remains an endosperm, um, especially monocotyledons like grains, and um, some seeds develop cotyledons. And the, the little tiny part that's only on one side there, it's the embryo. This sketch is kind of crude. Can you show me a like, more detailed picture? Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, so in this picture, we have, um, um, I wonder if I can draw with this, sure. Why not? I, I can do that. Do pen. The embryo is. Oh, what happened? Oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. The embryo is here. There. And these are cotyledons. And this is a seed coat. This is fun. This is the ovary. Boom. Okay. Next slide, please. We learned about some of the ways in which flowers vary, and. One of the ways um, has to do with the uh, relative insertion of flower parts. So looking at the bottom part of this diagram, we have um, what is called hypogynous, 
with a superior ovary. That means that the sepals and the petals and the stamens are separate from each other, and they are they, they develop uh, before or below, I should say, the ovary. So the ovary is superior. Another way in which flowers can be is to have the sepals and the petals and the bases of the stamens fused together into a common structure. That structure is called the hypanthium. I'll label it here with an H. <laughs> no, I won't. I'm trying to draw the mouse. It doesn't work. Uh, okay, stop now. Um, ooh, ooh, I just realized I have a stylus here. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ah, where's the pen? Lurking around someplace. Can I draw with my finger on it? Maybe. Um, and uh, and um, that is uh, called perigenous. It means around the gynecium. And um, if the hypanthium, oh yeah, now that I have a pen, I can I can draw better, right? Yes, much better. And then we have the hypanthium fused with the ovary, and so the sepals and the petals. Uh, rise off the flower above the ovary, that is an inferior ovary. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Um, we also learned about gynesium type. And um, some flowers have several to many separate stigma style ovary units. And each one of these develops into a fruit. That's called an apocarpus gynesium. Some flowers have one seed-bearing unit called a carpal, and you can see if you look across section, there's only one chamber, one row of seeds. That's called one carpelet, unicarpelet. Most flowers have several carpels fused together. In this case, it looks like five. Uh, that's called a syncarpus gynesium, more than one fused carpel. Ah, so now let's take a look at quiz number three.